Anastasia. <gasps> Darling, oh my God, I haven't seen, you have not aged. It's Nor very you. offensive. Nor have you. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I've had a little help from, from special people, but also glasses, stronger tint. We got to do These what we have to do. These glasses are divine today. How many They're, pairs do you reckon you've got? Too many. Yeah. Too many. To, I mean, I, I can't count. I mean, it's just rude to count because at this point, the same with, you know, sleeping with people. You just don't want to count. <laughs> It's irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, it's irrelevant. <laughs> you know, why talk about the past? It's a number smaller than 100 right, and bigger it's than 10. Smaller, yeah, it's not enough for <laughs> hands, but, you know, it's too much for... Um, yeah, hey, so I'm, I'm starting on a good note. I'm so, so that's, that's, good morning. That's like my favorite star of a podcast <laughs> ever. So you recently posted a picture of you lying on a heated floor, seriously jet lagged. Where are we at with the jet lag? We are we are much better with the jet lag, but I don't think I've ever been that jet lagged. Um, I, it, I had a really hard time trying to get to London and there were cancellations and, you know, where do I go sleep with cancellations? I was in an Airbnb, checked out, then I ended up sleeping in a, a like a... a Baca lounger chair. I don't know what you call that, but like, you know, old man's chair. Oh, yeah. Um, And uh, that wasn't great. And then I didn't sleep on the actual plane that finally got me to London because I was so anxiety about the work I had to do. Got to London. No bags. Oh, that is my worst nightmare. Like, I'm an overpacker, so I had three. There was a three chances for them to get one bag on the plane. And all three... They didn't know where they were. And I was like, okay, well, I'm really going to look crazy this week. <laughs> so they're going to be like, God, she's just really just sort of like dialed down her fashion. Yeah, where's you know? the leather jacket? Where's the, did you have glasses in your bag? Um, uh, Yes, I do carry the glasses Phew. in the bag. Because, you know, like they're prescription yeah. and I'm not you need trying to, see. to. Yeah, it would be nice. And then I also, I carry uh, the hair in the bag. I keep it all real. Yep. I carry the hair in the bag. I carry the glasses. I carry the jewelry. And I carry my um, in-ears for singing. Phew. But other than that, I had nothing. Like, I had no shampoo. I had nothing. <gasps> As it turned up. Yeah, it did. <sighs> I was very lucky because I, you know, you. I then wonder... Who's trying on my clothes? Like, what's happening out there? And I did have, like, this jacket's from back in back in the day. I was bringing some stuff back yeah. that I was pulling out of the closet because I'm in fades. fashion now. 90s is happening. So and I'm it, sure you're... Top's 20 it, years old. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, this is great. Yeah, I don't need yeah. a stylist for about two years. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then 90s I'm so in. excited. <laughs> you know, I've never been so fashionable. <laughs> well, so, I'm so glad that you're here and your aw, stuff's here. Yeah, it, it worked out. Thank but goodness. hence the post was me taking off the socks and realizing that the floor in the bathroom was heated. <gasps> and my back was like, oh, I could use a massage. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to lay here yeah. so that I can feel the warmth on my back. Two seconds later, I must have continued. Are you snoring? I was, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 did, I don't snore, and then apparently I do. <laughs> so I I really, I didn't know whether I should post it because then I didn't know if I would, my dating factor would go really far down no, but it's kind of like no, a no. little it's, it's a, like it's a, a little purr, purr. Yeah, yeah it's a, a little cat purr. purse for those of you that want to know yeah, it's kind of sexy right mm, yeah i think so yeah. yeah but i'm so glad that you've had a little bit of rest and yes because you've i have got that's stuff going on i've got a little bit of stuff going on yeah. i'm happy new music is always good to feel inspired by yeah you know it's beautiful. Yeah. It's great. And yeah. it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's, I'm I'm grateful to still be working. I mean, I I didn't think this would be where I am in life and that I could have a a section of my life that wants to keep getting played and people want to hear that. Yeah. You know, they could care less about new music, to be honest with you, my fans. But when it comes around and when it happens, it's always great because it makes a nice concert couple extra new songs but if i don't sing i'm out of love or left outside alone they're oh, like big trouble. oh heck no you know yeah but nobody wants to go to a gig and not hear I the agree. big favorite hits i, I hate it when you go to I a gig too. and someone just plays new stuff and you're yeah. like i don't know the words to this yeah so i i don't drizzle in too much of the albums that are new 
um, because they really do want the nostalgia. So Yeah, it's great to do a mix, know. though. I mean, next year, it'll be 25 years since you released your first It's a album. crazy thought. Crazy. It's a crazy thought. What does that feel like to look back on that two and a half decades, having released so much music and <sighs> been through, God, so much? Well, I'm I really, I'm proud of it. I'm also... Uh, shocked at the same time I don't feel like I've had 25 years of a career yet um so and I and so I I don't know what to do about uh, how do you how do you celebrate it you just go I hope I still work you know like that's that's what I go I'm I'm grateful for it and I want I don't know how many more years I get to sing because it's a gift it's not something I can promise to anyone that's going to happen uh every day or years to come so I'm grateful I can still do it I'm grateful I can still sing the songs that I love to sing I don't make them easy <laughs> no no why, I, I'm not a Sade uh, writer you know I don't write you know simple simple notes I write from the lowest to the highest you know mm. But it's a beautiful thing, and I think having that gratitude is mm. one of the many reasons why you're still doing what you do, because some people really do take it for granted and quite sort of complacent about their place in the music industry. And I guess the thing, when you look at a span of work like that, 25 years, and you see how almost unrecognisable the music industry is oh, from when I, you were recording well, and at I, the start. I did not, uh, I didn't go with them. And the music. I, I'm not hip hop. I've never had a rapper on my stuff. Like I've just continued to stay in my lane. And I'm grateful that people still want to hear just music without all the rest of it that is now it's, you know, Latin and all of this is I love it. But it's not really I don't feel I need to go there to change what is already working for me. You know, my sprock soul pop rock vibe is is going and working for me. Yeah. And also, I guess how you go about communicating an album and what you're doing, that's changed again. I know. And we've got TikTok and a whole other host of things that did not exist back in the day. No. How do you feel about those changes in the industry? I I think that I, I feel sad for the newer generation because there is something that there is just they're never going to know what music ultimately was like what it was like to wait for the the album to come out the cd the you know literal physical copy and and be outside the store and then they sold out and you're like when are you getting the next shipment like they don't know what that means and there's a buzz to what that is and a beautiful quality that I'm grateful I came out when that still happened. And I was able to experience it not only as a, a person that was a fan of music, but then the person that had fans. Mm. Um, it was quite a beautiful thing to watch in real time. But I do believe, you know, we can't control what's going on. And I guess that's you know, it, I still feel weird when I'm like, go stream it and beam it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't, you know, it's just weird to like advertise yeah. myself. It's mm. that strange. Yeah. You know, like I'm used to the record company and the publishing, you know, just all they they do what they do. And I just, hey, 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 you know. Do you but, feel pressure with all of that, with how much more focus there is on what you can do, how you can drive your social yeah. media, et cetera? Yeah, like I you feel said, like I'm of. not. I. It's a lot of work. It's it, there's editing stuff that I am not talented at. All of so it helps to have somebody that can help you edit. But I do like to run my page. I do like to be fully involved in what I'm doing, and I don't want just a a, a boring page because that's not who I am anyway. No, it's very you. Yeah. I liked the video the other day where you were trying to get to sleep, but you'd watched a crime drama. <laughs> I did. I was like, great. I'm in my Christmas PJs. I was like, oh, my God. You know, just sort of just natural me. <laughs> but, yes, I'm trying to show more of the natural me, like me on the floor. Yeah, Me snoring. in the bed in Christmas jammies. <laughs> and then me <laughs> like this. Yeah, be, being all gorgeous and being glamorous. Being so well. out of the bed. You can be it all. I can't. Well, I, I pay for it. 
to I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, many of us will not remember a time before Anastasia being about, you know, you've always been there doing Aww. your thing. But let's go right, right back for people that don't perhaps know your backstory okay. and how you got to where you are today and everything that's informed who Anastasia is. So right. you were born in Chicago. Yes. You have a you have brother and a sister that you were brought up yes. with. Yes, older sister, younger brother. Your dad left quite soon. Yeah, it, it was into you know after the after my brother, it was probably kaputs before my brother, but you know um, it was not a marriage to last. So uh, they were divorced, and and it was just us three and my mom most of the time, and we'd go visit dad. But it was uh, you know normal normal person, broken family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, you say, has made you and your sister particularly close. I, I think it really did. At the beginning, I have to say that she did kind of feel like she had a daughter because, you know, when she's the oldest, she has to look after us, too. My mom's sort of like, you know, the mother always looks at the oldest to to help the youngers. So when we got older, we became like super sister wives, you know, like we're like, Meh. yeah. Um, and she's great. We work together and it's wonderful. So, so she's on your team. Yeah. Love yeah. That. She's my assistant. Oh, oh heaven. What? But she's everything. She does all of it. Mm. When I say, you know, I sent an email, I was like, mm, well, but did I send that email? No, she sent the email. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, we called. No, she called. Oh, I so, love that. Yeah. But I think it's probably also, again, one of the reasons why you've stayed. I'm going to use some very base language here. Normal. Ah. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. are. You haven't, to me, as an outsider yeah. and a fan, gone into that world of absolute bullshit that you can get dragged into in the but music you industry. you haven't either. No, I refuse. Which I, no, and I, I really do relate a lot to seeing... Um, seeing wonderful people stay humble and real in who they are. And even though we've discovered ourselves throughout the years, you yeah. know, it's not like we were who we were 25 years ago today, but but there is a grounding that we still are and a learning curve that we learned. And that's part of the way life goes. And to me, my life is now hashtag never dull because it's like, you know, does plan A work? Probably not. You know, yeah. like C and D, who knows if it's on Z. I'm just go with the flow, you know, yeah. and laughing at the things that don't work more than anything. I'm like, of course my flight is canceled. <laughs> you know, like instead of like why and yelling at the desk, I'm like, really, people? Mm, you know? Yeah. But that's that's how you survive it, isn't it? Yeah. That's how you survive life, though. You can't dwell in it you yeah. can feel it i i think everyone has human uh they're human and they feel when something is sad they feel when they're not when something's not good but it all is about how you get through it you you have to get through it and if you don't you're paralyzed you continue to backslide you continue to repeat the same things you really have to look into what it is you keep doing wrong or what it is you keep not getting if you repeat the same things in life. And I had to learn that in my life when it came to relationships as well, where you stop saying, you know, I'm the victim. And I'd be like, well, I'm pointing a finger at you, but oh my God, I have three pointing back at me. And I'm like, uh -huh. I think I need to assess why I keep doing that. <laughs> I know. To myself, you know. Humbling stuff, yeah. humbling stuff. But it also gives you resilience. It yes. gives you patience. Yes. I mean, you started in terms of music industry types late. You were in your oh, yeah. 30s. That's why it really is trippy to think, 25 years because I already started late. So here I am, you know, most people have, you know, their 20s going uh, into their their plethora of like body of work. Uh, Mariah has that. JLo has that. And and I was just 10 years behind, you know. Um, but you think that served you very well? Because often when it's teenagers in the spotlight or people even in their young 20s, right. you're thrown this attention, this fame, this power. I can't imagine what, what it would have been like. Because I was already naive at 30. Like when I was fired from my job at 20. Nine. Is this just when you were at a beauty salon? Yeah, that I would, it wasn't. Thank God it wasn't the beauty salon. It was the facial and you know, like the the facial place. Okay, like Georgette Klinger. I'll say your name. I and hear you. um and you know you have to be really quiet and stuff like that. Like 
this right. was your was your process lovely great you look glowy you know and I, and I was like oh my god you're amazing and that's just ooh wow you look so young you know like it was not happening I was so way you got loud fired for being loud oh I totally did right. and then I got a record deal <laughs> um so I was collecting unemployment check got the TV gig was on TV then everybody wanted to sign me so it was very rando so not expected to work out at all because I didn't sound like anyone, look like anyone. Nobody wanted to have me wear glasses. You know, they're just like, why are you wearing sunglasses? I was like, it's a tint. Yeah. I was like, I dare you to put them on. You know, I would always be like, and they're like, oh my God, such a strong But this pressure exists Mm -hmm. when you start out. And I'm thinking, especially as a female, Mm -hmm. It's let's change your look. What box can we put you in? And you were and still are unboxable. Well, and I, to be honest with you, when I was really trying in the in the 20s to think that I could do this business, they would ask all those questions. I was like, but I'm, I'm a singer. Like, why? What? category am I in? I'm in the singer category. I was like, I don't really understand what any of that means. Why do I have to think so deeply about all the things like I didn't realize that you couldn't just be an artist. So all of those things started to get me to think that I'm not part of this business because I don't have a girly way of dressing and I do wear glasses and I just was a little tougher, more on the pink side, you know, which I'm very glad she uh, stuck to her own guns and she does her music the way she wants to do her music, even though she they bent her to be like, oh, we might want to make you urban. And she was like, mm, no, I'm going to push back on that. Love that. You know, that's inspiring for people that really don't want to follow the the mold and feel that they're not fitting in because they're following the mold. So where does that that drive, that determination come from to say, I'm going to do it my way. Is that something you learned in childhood? Is it from your mom? Um, Probably seeing the eternal struggle of a single mom, you know. It wouldn't surprise me that that was sort of my survival technique is I'm used to it not working out or I'm used to this, so let's figure out another way. Uh, started very young, my mom said, when I was – when my sister would get a doll and if I decided to play with it and broke it, it became my doll. And it would always have like one arm or the head would be like – or I cut the hair, you know, that glorious stuff mm-hmm. that we do and we think we're so smart. And so that would be my new doll. And so I'd have all these – not a lot of dolls, but some dolls. So I'd have to play hospital because they they would be broken. Yeah. The weight and bobbing. I, yeah. So I was like, oh, a hospital and the doctors. And then randomly I'm like sick my whole life. So, you know, it's a very interesting story. But I, I found the positive in here's your broken doll. And I'm like, OK, I'll play with it anyway. She's fine. You know, just because she's broken doesn't mean she can't talk to the other girls, even though her head's like <laughs> falling off. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. Very interesting. Um, yeah. That. When my mom said, you just, you know, it was very ironic that you didn't see that as a punishment. I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Sorry, Sean. Then I'm like, (laughs) but it makes you extremely flexible in terms of. Yeah, I was surprised that that was sort of my my inner choice was this ability to find the positive in a not so great situation. So when you get that break, so you end up on this this MTV mm-hmm. show, The Cut, right? And you've got lots of focus on you, attention. You've got people like Elton John going, "Who is this person? They're amazing, the craziest." We love part. Elton. That's the craziest part of probably anything that has happened to me in my life was. As I was young, I'd listen to his records because they were in the house, Barbara Streisand, Elton John. I would stare at the albums. I would put them on. um, And he was so, I think, instrumental to when my mom said I had to wear glasses and be wearing glasses at six years old. She said I did. (laughs) Yes. I was so like, yeah. Oh, I am like, Elton. Okay, well, I didn't expect the, <laughs> didn't expect that answer from you because not many girls want to put the glasses on. And I asked her for the windshield wiper ones, and she was like, "Oh God, now we're in trouble." Oh, you know wow. this one. So yeah, that was that was quite the the thing. And and 
he reviewed my record. That was the part that just tripped me out. I was like, he's reviewing records? I was like, he's EJ. Like, why is he, like, a journalist? He's obsessed with new music. Right. Obsessed. And that was so beautiful to have the first full circle moment to me, someone like him, uh, talking about my album so positively and with such passion, and then deciding to say, yeah, let me bring you on stage with me and just sing a little song, you know, for Madison Square Garden. I'm like, it just, it it still just plays. I'm so glad it was recorded. That's just, and, you know, visually and, and on the record because I see him and his face and my face and I remember it like it's yesterday and especially his kiss to my belly button after, um, I sang the song. He's like, Anastasia, because that's how he says my name, and I refuse to <laughs> correct ever him. correct it because it's, <laughs> it's just, Elton. It's Elton. Gone. Anastasia. And he did, th- and then literally went down and kissed my belly button. And I was like, oh my God, wait, was I supposed to kiss his hand? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just kind of like, what? what is, and I'm staring what is this? at the camera like, did that just happen? Did you see that? And then I go off and I scream backstage. Like, I'm like, ah, I can't believe that. You know, I I did it. I I sang with him. This is this is who I am for a second. You know, oh, it's trippy. It's such a beautiful thing when you see established artists really support and elevate new oh, talent coming I through. Love that. Have you felt the need to pay it forward, oh, having experienced? I, I it? do it all the time, and I can't half the time remember. And I love Instagram for that. To be honest. I slide into people's DMs and they're just like, what? Yeah. Because there's so much uh, art out there and there's so many talented people that you can't keep up with them. And I'm like, who's this? Suzuki? You know, I like I, there's so many different names. And and until you hear their talent or see what they're doing, I'm, I just praise. I'm like, uh, just keep it up. This is amazing. Your work is great. You That's know, so nice. Like and they're like. Oh my, you know, there's usually big letters. Oh my God, you're, and then they tell me their story. And sometimes I'll leave them a voice message. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> and I did that with Anne Marie, and she still no to way. this day is talking about, she's like, oh my God, I want to use it as my ringtone. Oh, you know, I she's like, that. it was just like, hey, Anne Marie. And she like imitated me. It. it was the cutest thing. That's but I was so like, brilliant. you're amazing. I love you so much. Blah, 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 blah. And she's just like, you just left me a voice message. That's crazy. Oh, the it's dream. Fine. Of course it is. And it's so lovely to shine a light on people yeah. doing brilliant things. Yeah. So at this point, you know, your career gets going. You're recording music. You're living this thing that you dreamed of for ages. Yeah. Then you get sick. Right. So you get diagnosed with breast cancer. Yeah. Had you felt a lump? What had taken you to the doctors at That's this point? That's the craziest part is no, no lump, no nothing. I wanted a breast reduction. And I was quite full figured up there. And it bothered me because I was small and I would always feel like that was a distraction as a singer. You know, Uh, I was like, listen to the voice, not, you know, like point in the wrong direction. And so I uh, and my back hurt and my mom had had one. So I just felt like, you know, um, it's just going to feel better. And I went in, found a wonderful doctor, went in and he just said, I I just want to have you do a few of these things and then get a mammogram. And I was like, what a mammogram is I I just always assumed that was when you're older, you know, and he's like, well, you you know, you're quite dense, large, whatever breasts. I want to make sure that, you know, it's all. He said, it's all clean. And I said, I'm clean. I'm mean. I'm pristine. I remember totally <laughs> sounding so stupid. And then um, went to go and get the mammogram. And and it was very different. The Like right after the first scan, it took a minute. And then they were like, we're just going to take one more scan. And I was like, one then a ultrasound and I was just some I have cancer. I just knew it because I could feel it in their spirits that they were like, mm. you know, like this is not do you need water? I was like, oh God, you know, their guilt, you know. And so the next day I went into the doctor checking the oncology and he's like, Yeah, it is, it's cancer. And I was just like, What? And uh 
so then they take the biopsy. And when they take the biopsy, I don't know what stage I'm in. You know, I don't know what it's going to be. And I'm kind of like, wow, I didn't think I was going to die from cancer. I actually was like, yeah, I'm going to go, a plane's going to go down or I'm going to like, you know, die in a in a chair with a cigarette, you know, like I'm going to do something really great. And I just didn't, I didn't think that was the way I, you know, after all this cancer. Um, and then it leaked before I even kind of knew what stage I was in. So it was when I was waiting for the results Probably I went in as Anastasia. I didn't think I needed to have a, a you know, pseudonym. So I actually uh, gave myself away in the hospital. And there was the world news just saying, would you like to make a comment? And I was like, um, is this I'd never made a comment like that. Or I didn't think that was real. So the, well, you know, Anastasia's press people said that she said, you know, like, I was like, wait a minute, I've never even done that. I don't remember what I had said, but it was just kind of like, uh, maybe it was helped. I don't know but that I even. terrible that it was this not, was leaked. Yeah, it was not cool because I didn't even have a time to tell anyone. No. And Elton called right away and Sharon called right away. And they're like, is this true? And I was like, "I, it's true. And I don't know what I'm I, I don't know what to do. And they're like, Sloan Kettering, we got you. Here's this. Here's that. And I just felt so embraced by everyone. But I have to say, when I got the diagnosis that I was, you know, pretty much not even stage one. So it had, it was super early in the way that radiation, and I was too young to actually need to do, I didn't need to do the chemo, but I also didn't have to take, too young to take the drugs. So they just blasted me with radiation. But in that brief moment when the good news came, I had already convinced myself that I have the best wig makers. I have the money now. I can do this. And then I get the news that I don't have to do it and somebody else is not going to have the money and is going to get the other news. And then a a shout of guilt for me that I'm like, why did I get the good news? Like that's now I'm guilty. And I just felt so much more of a purpose to help others because I was like, no way. This is first of all, I didn't even know the stats were the stats. I didn't even know that 80 percent, 70 percent of women that get cancer. It's not hereditary, ladies. It's not hereditary. And I think that number freaked me out because I'm like, why don't you discuss that? Why don't doctors discuss it? And they say that You know, we can't tell you what it is that gave you that particular cancer, which is not hereditary cancer. It's food, it's diet, it's stress, it's air, it's everything. But they can't tell you to do nothing. So (laughs) they just will, they can only do what doctors do, which is go on science. And so I am not a doctor. I go on Stasia and I go loud and I go direct. Mm. And I said, they gave the wrong girl cancer is what I just think. I was like, "Mm -hmm, you thought cancer was going to be a secret, but it's not. I got you. So I just used it differently. And I used the pedestal as a, a way to inspire women not to be scared or to be yeah, it's frightening. I'm not even going to say that any of it and the second time cancer was even more frightening because that was taking the journey to end all all breast cancer in my life. But you really have to do your best to be your own advocate in every part of your life, including your health. And I know that it's scary and I know you don't want to hear diabetes or whatever it is that that life has to offer. But if you don't hear it, you're worse for it if you don't try to get it early, no matter what. It, relationship, work, all of it, don't drag it out and make it worse for yourself, you know. But this is me wiser. I didn't do any of this when I was younger. Yeah. So, you know, I I do appreciate that I wrote really great songs about 
things that I didn't quite understand till now. I'm like, oh, is that what I meant to say? <laughs> yeah, I never really listened to my songs in a way they have of, a new meaning. of learning them. Yeah, they totally have a new meaning. I mean, after having it the second time, which yeah. was, was there a 10 year period yeah, between? 10 years to the month. To the month. I don't wow. know about the date. I didn't know the date, but I was like, really? 2003. Um, it was uh, January 2003, and it was January 2013, and I was like, this has to be a joke. Now, during that tenure, I said to myself, if I got it, and I was blessed enough to get it early yeah. to the point that I could control the narrative, getting rid of them. Yep. So you had a double mastectomy. A double mastectomy, yeah. radical, you know, uh, absolutely no nipples like that kind of radical not trying to have one percentage of anything and um and because i've had crohn's disease prior you know they're trying to find a muscle to use because i've also been irradiated so the pec muscle is not what it used to be and they can't put it on top of an implant so many different variables so my double mastectomy was so radical and so on my back, I have these huge scars because they had to take my lats and put them as the hammock that holds the new bionic booby. Yeah. And um, and so, you know, the the fascinating part is for about four years, every time I yawned, coughed, did anything. <laughs> it was not a good look. It was like I was like, ha, ha, ha. Because Oh, they're like moving. Right. Because when you use your back, it's like a current muscle that's mm. always working. But here, it feels very different because on your back, you're like, no big deal. You'll yawn. It reacts like a normal muscle. But here, it's like, no. I was like, had I known, I was going on it like, you know, it was crazy. Wow. But I got the nerve cut eventually because I just couldn't. I was like, I can't live with, I don't. If the muscle doesn't react the same way, I understand all of the visuals are what you tried to do for me. I appreciate, but I want to swim. Yeah. Like, I, this. Oh, wow, like, when moving. you go to try to do anything that's like using, it would do the opposite. Oh, it was, wow. It was kind of a party trick for my friends. I bet but, it was. You know, but it really became, I was so aware of it all the time. And I, I didn't want that to be a reminder anymore. No. So, well, you want to move on to the new right, but I was healthy, of your life. so mine were like you know, yeah, uh, uh, yeah my no. lats were ready to party. They were latching <laughs> it up. Yeah, they were. Um, how do you move on from health situations like that and stay positively minded? Because I'm sure there'll be many people listening to this out there who have been through. It might not be a health situation, but something that really floored them, something that felt huge, and it. And it can be very difficult to move on right. and feel right. optimistic and okay, positive. So I hate feeling that way more than I uh, than anything else. So my goal is to figure out how not to feel that way. Mm. And so constantly as things come my way that's yucky, I allow it to be there, understand, validate it. You got to validate your reality, but then go, <laughs> But no, no, no. You, you know, go through your stuff. It's going to come back. You're going to have hicks and roads. And and the more you continue swimming, you then realize that each situation becomes a wee bit easier. And as long as you're working on you and the people you have around you, you realize are really good supporters of being a better you. That in itself is almost a full circle of being able to have a great recipe to continue forging through all the mire. Like yeah. lockdown didn't freak me out. I like my own company. I think I'm quite exciting alone. Um, and so but uh, people were just trash. They were messed up. And I was like, yo, I've never seen so much good television. I never knew about a 90 Day Fiance. I'm excited. All those crime you know, dramas. Yeah, I never got to see anything before because I was working all the yeah. time. So I, you know. But did you have a certain amount of anxiety that you were left with oh, after I'm, experiencing I'm, that? I'm a very anxiety person. I have a lot of anxiety. That's I, interesting. I 
have talk myself down all the time. My voice in my head is always not necessarily the voice you want to hear. Mm. It's the analytical voice. My friends sometimes say analstasia. <laughs> What a nickname. <laughs> a little anal about that. Don't worry too much about that. You know, but, but it's interesting that you can be an anxious person mm-hmm. who is very optimistic because yeah. normally that can tip into Well, because pessimism. my brain is is in that reality versus uh, what you – like how you really feel, but then you got to move on. Like you can't, you can't do both of them at the same time. You either stay still in that – craziness or you uncomfortably move on and eventually it's not uncomfortable anymore it just but it's like a yearly struggle it's become so much easier but it was like if if anyone heard what my brain was like 25 years ago or 30 years ago I used to call myself Miss Piggy because I didn't think I was pretty I didn't think um, I was attractive or feminine so I, uh, you know, just was not very nice to myself in my head, but I always wanted to make people laugh and I always wanted to be that kind of person and positive. But if it was about me, I was really not nice to myself. So I try to not use that much language in my head as much, but I still. It's hard. I think it's we've very all got hard. that horrible, women shitty too. little voice. Yeah, I think women too. It's just, you know, it's hard not to compare. It's hard not to feel stressed about getting older and yeah. going, okay, well, yeah, I used a lot of Botox, but I can raise my eyebrows crazy because I'm yeah. not, you know. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm pretty okay about having a permanent frown. Um, but, you know, being honest with saying it and embracing life and hormones, girl. Oh, my God. Menopause was rugged the last few years for me. And people don't want to talk about that. But, girl, I thought I had a brain tumor. I thought I, like, I had just gotten two new discs a few years ago. I was like, my disc slipped. I was like, something's wrong on me. I have migraines. I... I thought I was having early dementia. Like, I was diagnosing myself, you know, because I'm so sick all the time. I'm a great doctor. Mm -hmm. That was the worst. The fact that I was diagnosing myself, I should have just checked my numbers. But we know nothing about hormones. And we're not necessarily told anything about them. Right. And they inform so much of how we're feeling. Oh, and it so helps. And it so helps. I'm doing, you know, the pellets and I'm doing all the, uh, the good hormones, shall we say, but I really do feel that that it's okay to start at any time. Yeah, I, I don't need want to get women to think early is not good and that you're not uh, a woman because you're starting early. It just you're helping your brain, you're feeding your brain, yeah, you're feeding your spirit because it's the all the nutrients is being you know depleted. So really, it's kind of like vitamins for your hormones. But I don't think enough people positively think that. Dealing with menopause is is a like oh, she went through menopause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I thought a hot flash was hilarious. I was because you're just sitting there, and you're like, my upper lip is sweating. Are you hot? Is it? Did you turn down the air conditioning? <laughs> you know, I mean, like, <laughs> and I kind of thought that that was fun to be honest, but I didn't really realize that I had gone through menopause within like two years. I was yeah. peri pre, and then like during the pandemic, after the pandemic, it was like I was gone. Yeah. And, you know, and oh, I, oh, yeah, you know, it was just I, like, like a journey. Yeah. This I, I this is like on my mind oh, a lot. My oh. mom went through the menopause at 42, which I am now. Ah. Oh, okay. there's little things where I think that's probably right. something to do with that. Yeah. I should probably make some moves to deal with it. But I think a lot of us just go fingers right. and ears. La, right. La, la. But it's if you do something... It's not going to change anything. It's just going to make you feel better. Yeah, exactly. And it's not a drug. They're really, really good bioidenticals that are out there that – oh, sorry. That bioidenticals are the jam. And trust me, I'm a cancer survivor and don't get freaked out. A lot of that is is, uh, the way to go. And I think that you get with a good – 
hormone doctor and a gynecologist that really understands how to work with the naturals. And you can start as early as you want. I mean, it's just shit balance yourself. That us women have to go through. But men are doing it too. Unreal. You know how much, how many men are in the office when I'm in the office to get my pellet? Yo, don't sleep on it. Don't snooze on it. Mm. Men can do it too. They they have their own dip. They yeah. have their own menopause that they don't want to talk about. But truthfully, it's I think it's good to let people know that it's not. It's not the negative that people talk about. It's if you wait too long, it's negative. And I waited too long. I got to the point that I uh, I was every month or every two months, I would have this migraine that would feel behind my eyes. I couldn't deal with light. And then I would throw up mm. for a, almost a whole day and have a hangover for two days. I was just kind of like, sinuses are terrible. So I diagnosed myself with sinus stuff. So I was like, I have sinusitis. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, a doctor hasn't told me, but I have sinusitis. And uh, then found out I was zero last year. And I was like, oh, God. All right. I guess I don't have a brain tumor. OK. So just give me stuff. Yep. That's great. And yep. I feel amazing. It has changed. I feel like I have so much more energy my brain is functioning better and you know we're all tired as we're doing a lot of different things yeah. but i think it doesn't help when your own body is drained mm -hmm. not just tired but your own body is draining from your own body you yeah know? it's working very very hard yeah. and i think these are the sorts of positive conversations we can mm -hmm. have about aging in general yeah. because i am so bored of like even when i was researching today and looking into all avenues of Anastasia's world and looking at your backstory and interviews, the amount of people that ask you about aging as a woman is a lot. tedious. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's not the same and for I'm men. Like, you don't no. ask Leo DiCaprio, how's, his, how's, how's aging? Your crow, how are your crow's yeah. feet doing? Though? How are your crow's feet, Leo? <laughs> What's going on with them? We don't hear it. No. There's an, such an obsession about it, and yeah. especially for someone like yourself who's yeah. in the public eye, who's in an industry where... Youth is everything. It's like who's the youngest, youngest yeah. musician out there? Well, I mean, there? and now it's it really with all the filters. Yeah, it, it's really stressy. And I I will say, you know, some of them are <laughs> cute, and then I'll I'll want to do a post, and I'll not realize I'm on one that's ridiculous, and I'll just talk into it like, oh, oh God. That's yeah. just sorry, everyone. I was I don't know why my eyelash is over here. You know, it's like it. it's just I find them fun, but people are using them as their real life uh, path. And of course, that's unattainable. You can't have that be your timeline. Nope. That's not who you are. And before the filters, it was touching up all the pictures that you take and making your legs skinnier and making you taller and all of that kind of thing where. You know, I mean, I have freckles, honey. I don't airbrush them off. Like, what are you going to do when I have to be in front of somebody's face? They'll be like, Oof. <laughs> so I never really allowed them to do too much, um, which is why when people see me now, they're like, you look the same. I'm like, well, you know, I mean, I would have made myself look ridiculous. And then you'd be like, hmm. But there's like. this strange homogenized human that's being created by algorithms mm -hmm. where we're so oh, used to seeing yeah. a face that looks a certain way rather than everyone's delightful, unique gorgeousness. Yeah, I know. It really is interesting that you start seeing who takes the bait and who doesn't. And, um, and it's all good. Anyone can do whatever they want to themselves in any way, shape or form. I'm not here to judge. But I do feel that the pressure that has come on the newer generation is this is the only way to look. Yep. And what you're doing when you're doing that, it's not just a haircut. Like, it's not the trendy haircut or the trendy pant. Nope. You know, it's like when you laser your situation down there and then you go, oh, the muff is back. And you're like, can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, the you know, make muff that back commitment, and... girl. Yeah, you're you bold. can't, like. Yeah. You know, put an artificial one on but, there. And right? you know, be more drastic. Like yes. you're saying, you know, it's obviously it's anyone's choice to do whatever you want. But when yeah. it's coming from an outside pressure yeah. and that's informing what you do and, and yeah. actually informing how confident you are to just turn up as you. Right. But it's also like that whole self. AI. There is that everyone looks like the same person. So yeah. if you don't look like that, you're not attractive. Yeah. And I definitely don't swallow that. Uh, 
at all because I've never been someone that was so gorgeous and on the magazines and had that pressure personally. So I didn't ever feel like, oh, my God, I'm so attractive. I need to stay attractive. So that wasn't my thing. But I will say that when I started in the industry, the one thing that I was probably the most and this is the first time I've ever said it. So <laughs> cheers to you. Thanks. Um, I was very stressed out that when I was signed, they wanted me to wear extensions and they wanted me to, you know, I was like, well, what's wrong with my hair? And then they wanted me to wear all this makeup. And I was like, oh, I guess I wasn't pretty. I never wore makeup before. I only would put lipstick on and put my glasses on. And, you know, what I had on my head was hair. You know, yeah. I just deal with it. And it was, you know, eight rows. Doing, doing, doing. I'm out of love days were eight rows of hair. That's why, you know, she had the. Yeah. And I almost felt like I could not leave or go out of a hotel or go anywhere unless I looked like her. And nowadays, I hire people and for the day, you have this. And then, you know, on my Instagram, I, you know, my hair's here and it's different. But I now have that part of me that I could go, you know, I'll clip it in and clip it out. You know, that's why I say I travel with my hair. Love. You know, it's OK, but I never wanted anyone to know that it wasn't mine because then I'm not going to be pretty. That literally was a narrative in my voice, in my head. And I was like, it's terrible that now I'm insecure about my hair. I never was insecure about my hair before I got in the business. Yeah. You know, and insecure that I at foundation like what's. Oh, my God, I need foundation. That's we definitely have to cover that up. And so but. Then I went backwards and I was like, no, we're not we're not giving into that. I can't put makeup on my face. I can't do my own hair. So what you see is what you get if you don't pay for glam, you know, like. Yeah, but also all of this detracts from your incredible gift that is your voice and the music, essentially. Right, like right. all of so there must be a discomfort for you all. Certainly was back in the day where you're like, wait a minute, I'm a good singer. But That's all that see, matters. That was that was my uh a lot of people wanted me to sing the moment I would get on their shows, like, hey, so anyway, can I hear you really sing? You know, can you sing a little bit of your song? Awkward, when you've got to and sing I'd be like, like that. I, I would do that because I felt as though I needed to prove to them that I was a singer, you know, that I really did sing like this because it was almost as if they didn't believe. Was it studio or was it real? And so for the first part of, you know, the year or years in my career, it was like, it's yeah it's coming out of her voice it's crazy and it was a nice feeling to do that but within all of the glam and the photographs and the photographers and them making you you know I doing a campaign where it looked like I was 510 you know I was like really though <laughs> I was like, this is really harsh but I can't do anything about it because it's a campaign yeah. but if it was like my record I'd have a little bit more say but wow you yeah. know like it was it's almost too much that kind of thing so I'm glad to just dial it back and and have my own uh comfort level of how when I want to get pretty I get pretty yeah. and uh and I use the word pretty as when you put all the stuff on you know and you're not in your sweats and which your makes you feel not. good though yes and there's nothing wrong with that whatever makes someone feel pretty yeah. it could be smoking a cigarette whatever that is for you cheers yeah. so for me it's when the glam squad puts their hands on me i'm like i mean i look like her <laughs> you know i'm like are you the singer in a stage like yes i am <laughs> you know so it's fun you know <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Looking back at yourself starting out in the industry, would you do anything differently? I don't know that I could do anything differently because I had to learn all of the negatives to understand that it didn't work for me. Or I think that my honest, true answer is I decided to leave my record company because my a &R guy was leaving. And he's the one that signed me. And he was with me for seven years, the whole journey, um, seven, eight years of of being signed to Sony. And, and I can't. He's my only. He's my one and only. He makes the music happen. He thinks in my head he took me as as I was and said, this is who you are, even though they put 14 pounds of hair in me. It's still he allowed me to wear my glasses and be crazy with my clothes. So 
we got to give him that. And he wanted to go to a different label, and I said, I want to go with you. And that probably wasn't a very good idea business-wise. Didn't quite think about that part because mine was loyalty and artistry. But leaving Sony, the monster that it is, wasn't because Sony was awful. It also was Sony, BMG. They were all, like, everywhere um, and nowhere at the same time during 2007, 2008. The market was a crashing and, and dying as far as money. You know, we were in a recession and... And I was at the top of my game, and it probably just wasn't fair to leave Sony, but he didn't really know at that point that that, that probably was the essence of – I never wanted to disrespect the record company, but I felt it just was the move I needed to make, which I probably wouldn't have made. But then again, so many things happened in my life. Um, by doing that, I journeyed in a whole different way, and – I wouldn't have had certain things happen in my life. So I, I have to look at it like I don't know that I'd not do it again, but I do understand that sometimes when you make a decision, you sort of have to be like, mm, yeah, probably probably should have stayed for a second. <laughs> yeah, but this is <laughs> – But I had people tell me to it. stay, but I genetic, like organically felt like, but he's my dude. You know, loyalty. Sometimes I'm loyal to a fault. And yeah. can you, know, you be though? I think that's a lovely quality. I think it's such a rare it, quality it in this is, industry. It, but there's where it can be a to a fault. I'm but I'm still I still believe in loyalty and all of that and believing and faith and I still have all that. But I can look back and go, whoopsie doodle, you know. Won't do that again. Yeah, we can all do that. It's all part of it, all part of who we are. But it's not, the word would never be regret. Yeah. I don't have that. I have honesty of, hmm, wasn't my finest moment, you know, but it was what I thought I needed to do, Mm. you know. Well, I'm so glad that you're still doing what you're doing and you're putting new music out there. It's so good to just hang with you, like, on a and level you. of, even though we're, like, doing this podcast, people, like, but we're also not. friends. We're also just chatting. Yeah, we're just girls chatting. We're just two I gals mean, yeah. chatting. I mean, like, I've never told her half these things, and she's like, what the heck? How do we have new content? <laughs> I love it. But thank you, Anastasia, and just Aww. all the love and luck. Go and lie back on that nice heated oh, floor. I know, but... You know, I was season. pretending to snore. No, I wasn't. It was it's <laughs> you such a real snoring. It's such a real snore. <laughs> like they were like, was that real? I was like, yeah, and I posted it. So you're welcome. Hurrah! <laughs> and then I made a meme for myself. Oh, so even you have better. to check out that. I forget what it was, but then afterwards, I was like, I need to meme myself. You know. Oh. So it's fun. You're the best. It's oh, thank you. So are you. Love you, Anastasia. I love you too, darling. 